Okay, so um, don't have a PDF. Um, so we just have this tool that I'm using um, that's available on uh, Intuition Info Web Protégé. Um, I appreciate if you're behind a corporate network, you can't get to this. Um, but if you go to there from out of a corporate network, you'll be able to create an account. Let me know the username and I can add um, access to this project. Um, it's using uh, a modeling technique that's pretty much an open standard, the W3C. It's called OWL and it's based on something called uh, RDF. So um, what are we doing? So uh, we have classes of things. These are real things, you know, like a passport um, or maybe a, a, a role that someone's playing in an ecosystem like a relying party or a claimant, etc. So we have things. Uh, we have properties. These are actually relationships. Um, bit confusing, really. Um, so this is the case that a, a class of thing, like a, a relying party, um, might then have a relationship with something else, such as a claimant. So um, or or a relationship. Um, with an artifact, um, which, for example, an artifact could be an event. So we might have um, an event in this case, an event, checking a passport, a previous event was applying for a passport. So these are the relationships, what we call the predicate. Um, and this model is just evolving as we consider the concepts um, so so we've got classes we've got properties as I say they're really relationships uh, then we have in this tool individuals so it let, lets us create instances of the classes um, and, and then define relationship between things right so these are some individuals uh, so this would end up being the real instance data somewhere um, and uh, uh, the model itself, parts of the model would be used across different areas of the business process. But but uh, what's great about this modeling technique and the data that's instantiated from it is that it doesn't matter where the, the data is homed, um, when you put it together, you can resolve the relationships between them and sort of traverse from one part of the business process to another. Okay, but when you're modeling, using this technique, you, you, you don't partition things into business processes. You just look at everything um, holistically. So the tool itself, just as a quick demo, if I haven't lost your attention already, is um, this tool lets us have comments on everything we're doing. So um, we can share those comments and then different people can uh, comment on them and we can sort of evolve the conversation. So you've got comments on different uh, uh, classes, ad actor address, attribute provider, authentication provider, you know, different things. And um, uh, also you can comment on the relationships, etc. And then there's an overall history of everything that's happened to the model um, since we sort of worked on it. So uh, let's have a look at some classes. So um, all of this is very fluid. It's just things we've heard in the meetings and things we've seen as concepts expressed in some of the documentation. So um, we've got this concept of a thing. Uh, here's an example of a thing, an actor. Um, an address is a thing. Uh, you know, we've got the concept of a chain, which is a thing that's a chain, for example, of events. So you could define something that was a chain and it's a collection of events for something. Um, data store. There's this thing called a digital identity, which didn't come first. That's that's come after. I actually introduced the digital uh, identity, um, and that this has uh, caused a question to be raised about: Well, uh, is it an identifier? And um, I'm hoping the model shows that a digital identity is nothing in hyperspace. It's just it's just really a collection of evidence. 
So if we look at, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. So if we look at actor, um, so we've been talking about a concept, a generic concept of entity. Um, so some sub subclasses of entity here um, are concepts, but also we've got some concepts under entity as well. So at the moment, I think act, actor and entity, for example, are duplicate concepts and could be collapsed possibly. Um, but kinds of entities, uh, they're the actors in the system, like uh, an organization, an individual, maybe a directory service is an entity, a checking service, um, an attribute verifier, an attribute provider, which may not be verifying, providing attributes, but not verifying. So these are the concepts. Um, you can see that some of them have comments against them. Um, so if I click on that, you know, there's a whole load of threads on the right in this tool um, that allows us to look at one attribute and then go through it and see uh, if there's any outstanding questions with it. Now for each attribute in the middle, there's a description uh, of the attribute and, and this is completely dynamic. So um, you can say whether the attribute uh, in the model is a subclass of a concept so attribute for provider has a parent of entity because it's a subclass. Um, you can specify the relationships you want to use um, with it. Um, and of course, you can see that we've given it a label, which is a name and a description. These, these also are properties or relationships. Everything is uh, subject, predicate objects in this technology. So even... Um, you know, how we're describing things is a relationship. So this attribute provider has a, a relationship called RDFS label. So that's coming from a standard library label. And then this is a label. Okay. So, and then this is a description. You can see this is coming from another namespace, um, which is actually Dublin Core. Um, so that's description from the Dublin Core vocabulary. And there's a description. And it just means that um, from a metadata point of view, if you use these vocabularies, um, different tools, you can do different tools and they're all able to work with the data because you're using standard namespaces. And the objective with uh, this exercise is we might come up uh, and publish through this project a, um, an ontology, a schema standard for defining uh, events, right? A lot of this stuff that we have in here might be pruned out to get us to a nice, clean, simple event uh, model. Okay, so if um, uh, we've got events down here, so in the conversations we talked about events that are change of circumstance, um, death, delivery, uh, that's like an Amazon delivery, that's classified as an event, um, an inspection, Someone's actually inspected something. That was something that came out today from some of the comments. So I created that concept in there. Change of circumstances. These are um, uh, where something's gone from one, one uh, before state and after state. Um, you can see we've got comments all over the place that, that, that are growing. Um, at the moment, it's myself and then David Alexander of uh, MyDex and T-Schemas. Um, contributed. I'm hoping to get a lot more, you know, cognitive engagement um, in the in the project using this tool. But it's early days, so that's the event. Then we have uh, evidence. So, you know, a lot of this evidence. This is the, so evidence is different to event. Um, you know, event has a whole context around. Um, have I described it? No, I haven't described it yet. But if I was going to describe it, I just you know, I might say um, description, um, you know, a process. So an event is a process, you know, um, would involve uh, parties carrying out the process uh, and result in an assertion of some kind. So I'm just making that up, okay? But we do need to differentiate between what is an event and what's evidence. So evidence is a just um, uh, a specific thing, uh, like a conventional document, um, but it could also be 
um, one record of an Amazon delivery, okay? Um, and maybe that's considered a, a, an event as well. Now, some of, some of these, you know, we're not, we're not restricting it. Um, I'm just having a quick click through here to see if I can find you evidence that uh, is also an event. So here you go, a delivery of Amazon uh, could just be considered evidence, but maybe there's some other information around that evidence of a delivery that would make it considered an event, okay? Um, so that might be that uh, the, ent the, the, the organization that delivered it has got a signature um, and Amazon has got some kind of process where they know it's been delivered um, that they will, be, they will be prepared to be accountable for. Okay, so that might make it an event. Um, so we're not setting anything concrete here. It's very flexible. Um, let's have a look at a digital identity. So, um, so we, here's some individuals. Um, I've got a digital identity here, which is a person claiming to be Boris Johnson. Very topical. So, um, so this is a, a unique entity. Um, that's what these IRRs are for. Uh, at the moment, it's saying webprotege.stanford.edu, but that might be HSPC um, or Oxford University or some other uh, namespace uh, that we might be able to uh, uh, have this um, particular record accountable to, right? Uh, but that's just how the technology um, works. So this is the uh, description of this uh, thing, which is considered a digital identity, right? So um, now all this digital identity appeared to be, as I went through the process, is some mechanism for me to collect um, various things that when judged together, at various confidence levels could be considered um, a way of, of proving that these facts are related uh, or, or, or when considered together represent um, a, a person, right? Or represent the entitlement to a claim, okay? So um, here we've got some relationships. So we've got has event and then that's an event, okay? Um, uh, has event, another event, move residents from 10 Downing Street to care of Bulgaria, Coburg. Um, has evidence, another form of evidence, has evidence, another form of evidence, has evidence, uh, a passport numbered something or other. Okay, so we can we can then go through to have a look at the object that's, that um, uh, this uh, individual uh, is related to. And when we say individual here in the tool, individual is not, uh, there's a clash of naming here between the individual that's named in the tool and the individual in our model, right? Individual in our, in our model is like a sentient being, a person, um, but here it's just uh, an individual is just a particular uh, node on a graph of information. And then this is showing all of the relationships or the arcs on a graph um, and, and the other nodes that they relate to, all facts. All of these at the moment are other objects Okay, um, not a static value like maybe date of birth might just be a 18th of the 11th, you know, 76 or whatever. Right, so if, if I followed through, say, has event here, I can click on this and it will take me to uh, another data point um, and I can now see what this is. It's a mock delivery record from Amazon. So now we can see it's a delivery type uh, of object and um, it has a relationship itself which we've called published by Amazon UK Limited. And then if I went to Amazon UK Limited, theoretically that would be a record describing that company as a legal entity identifier or something. Who knows, okay? You can also say that this individual is the same as something else. So you can actually have different views of what some, something is uh, and make them equivalent, right? Which is really important when you're starting to uh, um, navigate data or query the data. You can discover things from different angles that you hadn't thought of before, right? So, so um, if I go back to a person claimed to be Boris Johnson, probably the thing to end on is um, you can see this as a graph. Then it makes it much easier uh, for different types of people to, to 
to comprehend what's going on. So you can see here you've got a person claiming to be Boris Johnson, uh, has an event, move residents from 10 Downing Street to Bulgaria Coburg, um, uh, from 10 Downing Street to, both of those are a type of address. Um, here's another event published by Amazon UK. Amazon UK is a resource provider and a resource provider is a type of actor. So you're getting to see the instance data aligned to the model data. Really helps people interpret um, what this technology is. Uh, sorry, what the problem domain is. Um, so here again, you can see with the uh, change of residence that um, it's, a, it's a type of change of address, which is a type of change of circumstance, which is an event. Okay, um, again, ha has evidence, passport number is a passport, is evidence. Now, this one's interesting because here we have, um, uh, oh, delivery, okay. So we have, um, has an event, which is this uh, delivery. Okay, so it's a type of delivery, but delivery is both an evidence and an event, okay? So you can see how it, how how it's progressing. Um, so you can you can see it's quite hard to represent this in a PDF document uh, or anything that's flat. Uh, it's much better to get involved with it and interact with it. So it'd be really cool if you could um, uh, you know actually find a way to to connect, um, and I could give you access, and then you can be making comments and contributing um, uh, yourself and Shilpa, of course. Um, okay, so I hope that was useful um, and hopefully I get to speak to you soon.